Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been an eternity since we've actually uploaded regularly, but we are back for good. And what a better way to come back with a brand that actually started our channel? Yes, it's Asus. And they have sent their new Strix Z590 e-gaming motherboards for us to check out. Team Blue has been battling it out with Team Red and they have just released their new 11th gen processors with support for PCIe Gen 4. You can check the review out by clicking here if you wish to know more. But not only this, the motherboard also has a lot of tricks up its sleeve. So let's check it out. Starting with the obvious, the new CPU socket supports both the 10 gen and the 11 gen CPUs. However, one thing to note that the 10 gen CPUs do not come with PCI 4.0 enabled, which makes the backwards compatibility sort of a meaningless adventure. The new CPU chipset is not much different from the Z490 either. The new Z590 chipset supports more bandwidth for PCI devices, as well as the new Wi-Fi 6E standard which supports the new 6GHz band and also transfer speeds up to a massive 9.6 Gbps. Coming to the VRMs, ASUS has done something quite good here, with 1670 amp power stages and 14 of them going to the CPU, giving you over 900 amps, which is way more than enough to run any super high-end overclock chip. But then why do you need so much power? Well, the answer is simple. During load, the CPU is going to use only a fraction of these 70 amps, giving you a very less heat emission, while the entire load is shared amongst all the power stages. Opening the box, we are first greeted with the motherboard itself, which is pretty standard. Then we have the Wi-Fi 6E antenna and the Bluetooth 5.2 antenna. And a very new and my favorite piece of gear that comes with the motherboard is the GPU support bracket, which I prefer over the other ones that you have to screw them in the PCIe slots. Digging further, you can see that we have the stickers, welcome note, trusty manual and a driver disk, which I still hope changes to a USB stick someday. Then you have the keychain, four SATA cables, the new M.2 latch which I'll show you all how it works later on, some cable ties, VRM cooling fan, mounting screws for it and some M.2 spacers. The Z590 supports four DIMMs in dual channel with a max capacity of 128 GB at a frequency of 5333 MHz, of course overclocked with the 11 gen CPUs and it also does not require passive cooling which is good. Since it's a Strix, it comes loaded with a great amount of ports for all your accessories with one RGB and three ARGB headers. I know it's a lot of headers, but trust me, if you like putting a hell lot of fans, then four ports is a nice sweet spot. You then have an abundance of eight PWM fan headers for your fans and pumps. At this side, you have USB 3.0 and Type-C front panel header, which sits right beside the six SATA ports. And then you have all your usual thermal, front panel and other connectors. We also have the LED indicator which really comes in handy for a lot of situations. Lastly, we have the Supreme FX sound card isolated from the circuitry giving you some crystal clear audio. There are RGB strips hidden under the motherboard, IO cover and the M.2 bracket which give the motherboard a great look and I also like the addition of the small ROG tag above the chipset. Coming to the PCIe slots, you are sort of limited as there are just 3 slots in total. So if you are someone who has many PCIe devices, it might be an issue. However, the top 2 slots will be PCIe 4.0 bandwidth if the motherboard is occupied with the 11 gen Rocket Lake CPU. And otherwise, all slots will be PCIe 3.0 and the configurations will depend on which CPU you are using. For the I.O., Asus has got you covered with the DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0, followed by the lovely clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons. A couple of USB 2.0 ports, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 3 ports, 4 USB 3.2 Gen 2 and 2 Type-C ports with one of them capable of transfers up to 20 Gbps. You also have the two 2.5 Gigabit LAN ports which is a significant upgrade from the previous Gen motherboard. Then we have the upgraded Wi-Fi 6E connectors which come with the Z590 chipset and then we have the standard audio ports. This motherboard comes with a whopping 4 M.2 slots, however there's a small catch here. If you use a 10 gen CPU, you can only use the bottom 3 slots, so if you want to take advantage of the PCI 4.0 bandwidth and use all the slots, you will have to go with the 11 gen CPU. Now coming to the M.2 mounting mechanism, ASUS has given new screwless latches which you can see are super easy to use and work even with the heatsink attached M.2 drives. 
This is such a revolutionary change and it should become a standard in my opinion as it saves you the pain of fumbling around with small M.2 screws. So you must be thinking that this might be expensive, but it comes priced at INR 34,000, which isn't a lot of a jump compared to the predecessor. But of course, the price jump does justify all the new features you are getting. In conclusion, this fixed motherboard has quite a few noticeable changes and is no longer just a gaming motherboard, but a great choice for productivity as well. I'm really excited to build with this motherboard and see how it performs as I'm really tired to see Team Red everywhere. I would 100% recommend this motherboard if you're building a new system with the 11 gen CPUs and if it fits your budget. That's it for the video. Thank you ASUS for the motherboard. Until then, like, subscribe, share and I will catch you all in the next one.